Hey guys, what's happening? So I'm shooting this one off the hip again. Uh, this is a video or a video review or unboxing, whatever you want to call it, of a 20 inch Poland Pro chainsaw that I bought off of eBay. Um, Hurricane Michael just came through and wrecked uh, the area of Georgia that I live in. So it just, you know, I have two crepe myrtles in my yard, two little crepe myrtles in my yard. I don't even have any big trees, but I have neighbors and family members and stuff that just have trees laying everywhere. I work for the telephone company and we have trees just all over with the cable on the ground and stuff like that. Um, and I wanted to get a saw that I could go out and actually cut some bigger stuff. And when I got done with it, I could throw the saw away or if I didn't like it or whatever. This saw I bought was just over a hundred bucks on eBay. It's a reworked to original condition, uh, Polong Pro or Poolin Pro or Poolong Pro, whatever. Um, you want to call it 20 inch saw. Um, I've got a little 14 inch wood shark that I bought from Wally World about six years ago. Um, every year I pull the carburetor off from some carburetor cleaner through it, clean it up, tune it, um, keep, you know, good. I actually run that true fuel mixture in it and I don't have any problems with that saw. It runs great. Keep a good blade on it, keep oil in it and it works fine. I don't have any, you know, issues for, uh, the consumer hobbyist chainsaw guy. I think the little Poland saws work great. Um, if you are a, you know, if you work in tree business or if you work in some types of timber industry where you have to run a saw 100% duty cycle, then you might want to look at Husqvarna, Echo, or, you know, the big dog steel. Um, but my little Poland chainsaws have been good. I think it's just a matter of knowing how they run and an aspect of being able to clean and tune them on yourself. They do require a little bit more maintenance than some of the more higher dollar chainsaws that are in the 600 to a thousand twelve hundred dollar range this is less than 200 bucks for a 20 inch chainsaw so i'm going to try my best see telephone man um to open this thing box is kind of rough shape the ebay store said this company was out of lincoln nebraska i don't know if that's a polon place or whatever a pulling place but uh let's see what she looks like um, hopefully, I mean, I'm expecting it to be a pretty decent saw. Alright, there's our, I guess you call it your power head, your saw itself, motor and stuff. Looks like it's in pretty good shape. Um, I guess this is a refurbished saw, again, right at a hundred bucks. Uh, 5020 Polon Pro uh, BRC, the newer one. I think they're calling it the Polon Pro Recon or whatever. It's after the AV saw. The AV, the whole side case was all yellow. This is the BRC. And I think they call it the Polon Pro Recon 5020. So, this is a refurb. Check it out. Looks pretty good. I don't see any big visual damage on it. You know, you can tell it's been used a little bit, but hey. You know, for 100 bucks, we need to help my neighbors out, run a 20 inch saw, if it cranks up and runs, that's a good deal. And if I don't like it, I can fix it, of course. I've been fixing all different kinds of stuff, guys. Uh, great example of why not to, why you run um, ethanol free, 100% ethanol free gas, and you don't let gas sit up and stuff. Uh, I've been working on generators and stuff for people. This one's for my father-in-law. He bought this as a spare generator at a yard sale a few years ago this is a late 90s model home light 4400 and the car the, the entire fuel system was just trash like for you carburetor guys out there i can't even get the needle out like the float needle um the inlet needle whatever you want to call it it is grown into that carburetor so needless to say bought a, like a 12 dollar replacement ebay carburetor threw it on the generator generator fired right up and ran great okay back to the chainsaw Looks pretty good. Yeah, feels like it's got a little compression in there. Let's see what else is in the box. Package strange. Okay. There's the little tool. Um, these saws are pretty cool in the fact that, you know, a lot of times we keep these in our pockets um, for you guys that have worked in the timber world. I've never been like an outside timber woods guy, but there was a short time, about a year or so, that I was an actual heavy equipment mechanic for a timber company. But that's pretty convenient. 
that thing actually goes in there, pushes up in there, and then locks into place. So you've got your tool with you wherever you go. I saw that in one of the other video reviews. Looked pretty decent. You know, I think that these these stalls or Poland has given themselves not necessarily a bad name, but they've done things that kind of make the saw. There's the bar. The bar has been repainted. It looks like flat black. I'm pretty sure that they have Poland stickers and stuff on them when you originally buy them. Or it could be another, an off-brand bar, whatever that this refurb company uses. I don't know. All right, what else? So, and I guess here's our chain, factory reconditioned chain, um, 20 inch. So this saw runs a 20 inch, uh, three eighths, and I'm pretty sure it's 0 0.50. Um, but it is a 70 link chain. It's a DL. I knew that I already researched that when I got it. I have, um, an Oregon chain come on like the, the non-safety chain, the more professional grade chain. I think that really helps some of these saws that are on the consumer base. Uh, the, the consumer friendly guys, they go out and when they design and build a saw for, you know, a consumer, like a family guy or household guy, that's not necessarily a timber worker. They, they put the, what I call a safety chain. They don't have as much kickback in them. They're not as liable to really bite down the wood and buck back on you. But that's it. That's it. That's empty. So comes with a user manual, instruction manual, which is nifty. Um, this is some warranty stuff, chain, and bar. That's the saw head. Got a pretty hard break. It's cool. I mean, not hard to actuate, but it, it locks in place. The other one that I have is just kind of sloppy. Choke. Off on linkage, all that stuff feels great. Trigger stuff feels good. One of the complaints I saw was this was kind of flimsy, which it does seem to have a little bit of a twist in the handle if I really torque on it. But um, I, that's not your torque side, guys. This is your your handle out here is where your leverage goes. Your right hand and that just controls your throttle. Um, learning how to run a saw and the do's and don'ts of running saws. There's some really good videos out there. Some guys that that's all they do, um, or that's they've spent hours and hours and a lifetime behind the saw, and they've got some cool videos on. Um, I think one of them's like how to be a chainsaw hero or something like that. But it's got some good information for you guys. That just hey, I, an oak tree fell in my yard. I got to go buy a chainsaw, cut this up because I don't want to pay a tree removal service to come out and remove these things. And that's another thing, man. These tree removal services, I get it. They come in and get trees out of people's yards after a disaster like Hurricane Michael wax an area and they, everybody's got a tree now. But man, they're up there on what they're trying to charge. I've heard some of them trying to charge two grand a tree. That's ridiculous. Um, you know, but hey, them guys drove all the way here. They're getting hotels or cleaning people's yards up. I guess that's the price of business. I don't know. Um, again, guys, here's the model number and stuff of this saw. It is the PR5020. Um, but you can kind of just see everything there. I'm probably going to do the, uh, the, the muffler mod. I'm going to knock another hole in this thing. Um, EPA and emissions has gotten into even chainsaws and they've got spark arresters and all that kind of stuff in the mufflers and which is like a cage that's in there and two stroke oil smoke clogs those cages up. It reduces flow. Two strokes work off of air in, air out, just like a four stroke. But I mean, they are, you can really make them scream by giving them a little bit more of an exhaust port bore or something like that. So anyway, this is just the unboxing. I'll continue this video here in a few. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get it assembled, check it out, um, go over it, throw some fuel in it, see if it fires right up or see what kind of adjustment and playing I have to do with trimming this uh, or tuning the carburetor up, see what she does. But hopefully, man, it's... This is coming from a rework place. I throw some fuel in it, throw some bar oil in it, put the chain and everything on it. She cranks up and runs. Again, guys, this is a what I would consider a throwaway saw, a quality throwaway saw. This is a reconditioned Poland Pro 5020. It's not your top of the line, 
run out there, six hundred dollar saw. It's a just over a hundred bucks from a re factory rework center, um, Poland Pro. So we're gonna see what happens. I'm gonna see how it runs. I'll do some testing on it. Um, I've got some trees to cut up. Maybe I can get some footage of me out there actually cutting some fresh fall uh, trees and uh, see you know how big of a how it bogs or you know how it runs and all that other kind of good stuff. Again, I appreciate it. And somebody also mentioned that that is everybody. I think that's a chainsaw junkie or whatever. And most people know that chainsaws like oil and the and the fuel mixture. Um, this saw, when I saw it online in one of the reviews, it said fifty to one. And I kind of scratched my head on it. I don't know very many chainsaws that are fifty to one. I think that they've done that for this new type of oxy whatever power thing that they have going on and it's probably more or less an emissions thing um but i run true fuel stuff and all of my two-stroke crap um that pre-mixed in a can stuff that everybody oh that's a joke that stuff actually pretty good it's 92 octane it's uh ethanol free it's got all your additive stabilizers and stuff in it no joke my weed eater i run it in my weed eater winter time comes i put my weed eater up sits there springtime comes i go out pump the bowl three or four times put full choke pull the handle it fires up that stuff's pretty decent i don't have to mess with that kind of stuff but uh that's just convenient anyway i'm probably going to do the same thing run it in the saw if i'm going to be running the saw for a long time um i'll probably switch over to a fuel gas mixture when i know i'm getting close to where i'm going to be running out on my last tank i'll probably fill it back up with that true fuel and then run some true fuel through the carburetor and back through all the hoses and stuff and get all that gas and uh, the gas mixture out of there. That's a good trick for you guys uh, for economy if you are into running that pre mix stuff like I am. If you're going to be running for long intervals, mix up a can of gas and take the true fuel stuff with you. Run the gas can stuff if you're going to be running all day. And then towards the end of the day when you know you're going to shut it off or you're getting down to your last tank that you're going to burn, go ahead and fill it back up with that true fuel. Run that stuff through there, clean all that stuff back out and get those stabilizers and additives back in your carburetor so when you go to pull it the next time, in a couple days, a couple months from now, it fires right up. Anyway, guys, that's the end of my unboxing of my 20-inch Poland Pro I grabbed off of eBay from a refurbed factory reconditioned, whatever, just over 100 bucks. I ordered this saw a day and a half ago off of eBay. It's at my house. Um, set it shipped from Lincoln, Nebraska. I'm in southwest Georgia. Anyway, guys, appreciate your time. I'm hoping this saw works out good, and I'll keep the videos going on what happens with it. We'll do some more. We'll do some cutting, some tuning, and if I find any issues, um, if I'm able to resolve them, and if I'm not, we'll, uh, I'll tell you, oh, this all just totally sucked, and I had to uh, either throw it away or see if the company would take it back. Anyway, thanks so much for your time, guys. I know these are another one of these chainsaw videos. I haven't really seen a whole lot of good video on this saw here, so I'm going to try to give you a really in-depth one. There's one other cat that's got one that's really good. He goes through um, a really long process with it, and he did an outstanding video. But uh, me, I'm just doing this one off the hip with my cell phone, walking around talking about it nonchalantly, but hopefully giving you good information on the saw and some basic common chainsaw practices. All right, thanks, guys. Appreciate your time. Um, stay tuned.